Our food supply has changed more significantly than our DNA and what our body requires. What the heck should we be eating for longevity? I mean, when you look at the longevity field, you hear everything from you should be a complete vegan because animal protein will kill you and will drive mTOR and cause an early death, or people who are saying, no, you actually need a lot of animal protein to build muscle and to live a long time. So, you know, should you be keto? Should you be vegan? Should you be paleo? Should you, like, what the heck is a longevity diet that you've come up with that makes sense, that incorporates all the scientific research that we do know about how our bodies work and how we age? So we, we kind of get out of these ideological wars and come up with what actually is scientifically prudent and sensible and makes sense. Yeah, that's very practical. I take a very pragmatic approach and we develop philosophies that, that, that sometimes are convenient. But uh, for me, uh, it's been a lifetime of discovery and I've gone through different phases of my life. When I first got into health and nutrition, I was a, a strict vegan for six years. Uh, then uh, I started eating uh, fish and then uh, you know, now my, my diet is, uh, uh, you know, I, I would say I eat very clean. I don't eat any processed uh, foods per se. Uh, but one of the dietary principles that I, I, uh, to, uh, I had a thought when I was taking physics and looking through a prism and seeing a beautiful rainbow. And the rainbow diet's kind of gotten very popular these days. But I, I had this back in the 70s. And the idea is that uh, we should be taking advantage of all these different plant pigments in, 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 in our diet. And uh, I have a love affair with a particular type of plant pigments, flavonoids. There are over 8,000 different flavonoids in nature. And uh, as a class of compounds, flavonoids is, are referred to as nature's biological response modifiers. And let me define what that term means. It means that these plant compounds, these pigments, can help modify our response to uh, environmental issues and things that are going on in our body. And this is demonstrated by their antioxidant, antiviral, anti-cancer, anti-aging, anti-inflammatory effects, and many, many more. And uh, flavonoids are the key components in many uh, foods and medicinal herbs that are responsible for their medicinal effects. So I have made a very strong commitment for uh, over... Uh, over 45 years now of eating a diet really rich in flavonoids and taking a lot of supplements. And uh, by the way, this is a, a sample of what I take every day. I take a lot. Of, I take a <laughs> For lot those of, of you who can't see it on audio, it's a big <laughs> little baggie full of stuff. Probably yeah. 30 or 40 pills in there. Yeah, it, it, exactly. I, I, on my on my website, I people always ask me, "What do you take? What do you take?" And so I, I put it on my my website, drmarie.com. Uh, all the supplements I take and, and why. And you, if you look at uh, that supplement list, it focuses a, lo a lot on, on plant flavonoids. And then uh, on my website, I also have uh, uh, an article that I wrote on how to, how to measure your flavonoid intake, how to have a target of what you ideally should reach, and uh, how to get there through dietary choices and supplements. So I'm a big fan of, of, of flavonoids. And, and the great thing is, is they, they are readily available in food. Uh, uh, you know, everyone thinks of blueberries, uh, but uh, red kidney beans actually have higher uh, antioxidant activity, higher flavonoid content than, than, the, uh, than, the, than the blueberries. Uh, dark chocolate is a good choice. Uh, raw cacao powder is better. Uh, so there's just a lot of secret ways that I've found to really boost my, my flavonoid intake. And it, it, no matter what diet that you follow, I think you have to take advantage of these beautiful gifts from nature. And the way they work in our body is truly a miracle because these are highly active compounds. So uh, nature has built in a way that we can ingest them and they circulate in our blood bound to various compounds like glucuronic acid or sulfur. And uh, what's interesting is uh, they are liberated from those conjugating agents or the compounds they are bound to in areas of need. So it's, it, it really explains how they can be so pharmacologically active, but very safe because nature has built in a safety profile for them. And, and so I, I like to flood my system with these flavonoids to make sure that they're there when my cells need them. 
Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. I sort of want to uh, uh, talk about something that's in the in the field right now, which I don't agree with, but is, is certainly getting attention, is that plants have these anti-nutrients, that the phytochemicals in plants are actually poisons, and that we shouldn't be eating them, <laughs> and that the whole carnivore extreme version of eating, which is basically just eating meat or animal protein, suggests that these plant compounds are actually harmful, that all these phytochemicals are the plant's defense mechanisms, they're their own poisons, per se, they're pesticides, they're herbicides, they're, they're things that repel uh, various predators, <clears throat> And we're consuming these. And how are they good for us if they're the plants' defense mechanisms that may be poisons? Yeah, and is just uh, and is flooding your system actually the right thing, or is there, is there a particular dose that matters versus just having a huge amount of, let's say, green tea extract or <laughs> rapeseed extract or something it, you know it, floating it, around it, your blood? The, these these phytonutrients or phytochemicals are, are really interesting the way they they work in our body, and sometimes. Uh, uh, it's they don't have a, a we get lost in the direct effect, but uh, the fact that they're able to influence uh, the expression of certain genes and uh, the overall impact on our cells it's it's uh, pretty hard to argue against them. Uh, they really are conductors of a beautiful beautiful orchestra that's designed to keep us healthy and and I think uh, I think. Uh, if we if we don't consume a diet rich in these foods, we're really uh, uh, doing a disservice. That's not to say that we can't see temporary benefits from following even extreme diets. But uh, I think when you look at what our body needs, uh, it, it's uh, it's clear to me that we're we're meant really designed to be uh, omnivores. We're not designed to be carnivores. We're not designed to be uh, vegan. We're designed to take advantage of both animal foods and plant foods. And there's certain foods uh, that uh, I think promote health more than than others. And uh, uh, you know, I, I think uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, uh, legumes. I think uh, you know most people are kind of getting away from from grains. I do think they have their place, but not so much processed mm -hmm. grains. I think we definitely would need to get away from ultra processed foods, right? That's what the research keeps showing over and over and over. There's a wide berth of what uh, our bodies can consume and be relatively healthy. Uh, and likewise, there are uh, a, a, a narrow range of foods that we can eat to make us achieve our optimal level of health. And, you know, I think both of us are kind of living proof of that. Uh, you know, we're not separated that much by, by, uh, by age. I'm a bit, a uh, bit older than you, but uh, like you, I plan to be forever young, uh, if, not, <laughs> if not in body, at least in uh, 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 spirit and, and attitude. Totally. It's so true. I think, well, for sure, it's also possible to be healthy in body too. I think that's the whole point of this. I just finished writing my book, uh, Young Forever, about longevity and it was very clear to me that that as i came upon the science of the things that are really working to both make us healthier and live longer that they hearken back to the principles of natural medicine which is activating the body's own innate healing systems its own innate healing mechanisms that are embedded in our biology that are designed to keep us alive and well throughout our lives but that get honestly trash by our modern lifestyle right and so so i kind of want to dig into your approach as someone who's really an expert in this around the things that you discovered as you were writing your book the longevity matrix and and the kinds of things that you found to be um most effective what were the the most important strategies from a diet and lifestyle perspective and and maybe some other things so we can get into some of the details but i want to know what is 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 the things that you kind of were like aha to you that were so powerful in my book, what I what I focused on first was uh, a couple of th basic things because uh, I look at, at what is effective in helping people not only live longer but have a higher quality of life. And mm -hmm. I, what I discovered years ago, I, one of my big aha moments was I was reading a, a Sports Illustrated article about Stan Musial, and this is one of the most beloved sports heroes of all time, and. He was famous for acknowledging people and showing appreciation. And I, I realized that the people that I knew who were long-lived, that's a polite way of saying old, 
<laughs> whom I respected, loved, and, and re appreciated, they all had one common feature. They had many different personalities, different uh, routes in their lives, but they shared a common feature, and that was they had an ease to expressing appreciation, and they lived in a state of grace. And, you know, Cicero said that uh, uh, gratitude is not only the greatest virtue, but the mother of all others. And I started looking at the science of gratitude, and there's a whole field of psychology wow. that's just rich of wonderful discoveries. It's a positive psychology. And, you know, our, our lives are supposed to be full of s such a range of emotions. And the ones that we need to feel more of, they, they really start with gratitude. But, uh, you know, I, I look at all the emotions that I truly love experiencing awe wonder, excitement, enthusiasm, inspiration, and all of these fuel a life worth living in and really fuel us to, to want to live longer. So that was one of my big aha moments. And wow. I'm, I'm curious uh, about yours. Yeah. So it's interesting. So it's not about like what you eat or exercise or any of that. It's not about the right supplements. It's about your mindset. And how you see the world and how you feel about your life and whether you're grateful or resentful, whether you live in a, a state of joy and connection or whether you live in a state of regret and hurt and victimhood. And and I think there's a real phenomena that is, is biological that gets translated through our thoughts and our feelings. So whatever is going on in your life, whether you know, you're a prisoner in Robin Island like Nelson Mandela for decades uh, but somehow he managed to keep his sense of humanity and his kindness and his wisdom. I mean, that, like, you know, you think well, our lives suck. Well, imagine being on Robben Island in South Africa and apartheid and, and, and how he survived that. I was just down there. So it kind of reminded me of, of that when I was, I was in Cape Town. And I, and I was like, wow, you know, it, it's really so much about what goes on up here that determines what goes on in the rest of our body. Yeah. And here too. And I, I want to, I want to, uh, make an observation that I've had about you known to all, all your viewers and listeners, and they probably noticed this as well. Uh, the longest uh, study uh, in history is the Harvard Men's Study, and they looked at uh, men. I think the study started in the 1920s, and uh, they looked at men in, at different socioeconomic uh, uh, levels. And what they found was uh, following these men over the course of their lifetime, the biggest impact on determining health and longevity and happiness and the quality of their lives was the quality of their relationships and their ability to make connections. And my observation about you, Mark Hyman, is you are gifted in that area. I, I uh, really know uh, uh, no one better in making, making heartfelt, meaningful connections. And uh, oh, I know you have you. great <laughs> connections in your life. And I know that has to be a big aha moment for you because uh, I've known you a while. And, and they, it, I just want to congratulate you. Thank on, you. Thank you. It, it is actually part of the secret of my success is, like, <laughs> you know, it's actually valuing and spending time and energy on keeping, maintaining, developing beautiful relationships uh, across both, you know, personal and professional categories. So I think you're right. It's, it's really a key part of longevity, which is feeling connected and feeling a sense of belonging and meaning and purpose. Um, I think all that is so true. I, I want to kind of dig into some of the more practical things that people also want to talk about. I want to sort of come back to a little bit more granularity on the nutrition front. So clearly, I, I agree with you that I think a lot of these phytochemicals are important. And many of these work through activating various longevity pathways in our body, these switches that uh, we now are, are understanding more carefully as we kind of peel back the layers on what we call the hallmarks of aging, these underlying mechanisms that go wrong as we get older that are influenced by everything we do from our thoughts and beliefs like gratitude, but also to the phytochemicals in food and, and our exercise and, and all sorts of inputs that we can regulate. Um, but you wrote this book, uh, The Longevity Matrix. What was your what was your main thesis and what was the sort of main concept behind the book? And that what led you to write this book? Because I think it's, I mean, there's so many books on longevity. I'm just curious about like your frame of this as, an, as a doctor who's really expert in natural medicine. Well, Mark, uh, you know, I learned something uh, years ago from uh, one of my one of my favorite patients of all time. His name was Dean and he had a very rare genetic disorder. And he was the most compliant, motivated patient I ever had. Uh, and 
he said something to me once. I asked him why he was, you know, going through all this because it was a very painful existence. And he said, uh, uh, he goes, all I can do is all I can do. So why wouldn't I do all that I can do? And when we look at when we look at what what constitutes health, if we look at what helps us live a longer and healthy life, it's a constellation, it's a matrix of different factors, different facets. And we really have to pay attention to all of them. And that's my point of, uh, of the book. And uh, one of the big st- uh, stress points in the book, things I, something I stress over and over again, is that uh, there just about every major uh, class of medicine that you look at, every class of drug that you look at, it's providing short-term benefit, but providing long-term damage. And uh, that shows up in studies looking at the impact of various drugs on our longevity, whether we're talking proton pump inhibitors, we're talking benzodiazepines, we're talking about other sedative hypnotic drugs, we're talking about acetaminophen or Tylenol. Uh, very simple drugs often produce disastrous long-term effects. And so uh, philosophically, I want to help people get away from that mentality and focus on what they can do to build health, to create a matrix in your, their body that will support them uh, for the rest of their lives. And what I found in, in most people, Mark, is that uh, they're not so much interested in, in living longer. They want to live better. Better. And yeah. stronger now. And uh, one of the first things I focus on in the book is is helping people create a why. Because what I found, and, why, and yeah. probably, you probably found this as well, is that many people really don't want to be here because right, right. No, they're, 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 they're not happy. They're dealing with, with health issues that are hard and they're struggling and, and life is such a challenge and they don't feel well. You know, so it's, you know, talking to them about living more like this, it, it's not appealing to them. So helping them realize that that's not what life is supposed to be. Life is a celebration. We're supposed to be getting up every day and say, fantastic, man, I'm thankful to be alive today. And this is what I'm going to do and, and, and go out and do it. And, uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of things that go into feeling like that. And, and that's really the basis of my book. And I'm sure your book as well. We have to help people feel better now so they want to live longer. That's absolutely true. Um, in terms of the the, the the sort of protein question, I want to sort of come back to that because I think, you know, in the longevity field, there's a lot of debate about this. And a lot of longevity researchers are suggesting we should be vegan because we don't want to stimulate mTOR. Can you kind of speak to that and and and, and the whole idea of protein and aging and muscle mass and the, sort of the kind of balance between sarcopenia and, and and the need to build muscle, but also the need to kind of do cleanup and repair through autophagy, which is cellular cleanup? Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a big topic. I, I, uh, I, I, I eat... Uh, uh, predominantly a, a high protein diet, uh, I, but I try to get my protein from, from clean sources. Uh, I uh, rely on uh, whey protein. I know that's controversial for some people, but it's a very high quality protein and it's very clean. I, I focus on uh, a, a moderate consumption of fish, particularly clean fish like salmon uh, and uh, and I also uh, focus on uh, on uh, eggs and egg whites. Uh, th- that's where I get uh, the majority of my my protein, and I I, I like a high protein diet because uh, uh, I think that that promotes uh, muscular health. You, if you don't have that protein intake, uh, then you're going to lose muscle mass, and when you lose muscle mass. Uh, you're accelerating aging. Uh, muscles are the main uh, furnace of our body. It burns. It burns uh, fat. It, it helps our metabolism. It, 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 uh, it, everything works better if, if we have an appropriate uh, muscle mass. And we start losing that muscle mass. And as we age, we're, we're, we're gradually losing it. Then we start uh, being more frail. Uh, that, that we now know that that sarcopenia, the loss of muscle mass, uh, is kind of the the predecessor to osteoporosis. 
we know that there's a there's a link between sarcopenia and uh, uh, you know cog loss of cognition. Uh, so we, we're we're starting to understand that it's important to 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 build and maintain our muscle mass throughout our life. So uh, that plays into the next area, lifestyle. And and, I, and I'm a big believer in, in regular exercise. It's a great investment uh, for every. Uh, hour of exercise you put in, you're supposed to live two hours longer. So you and oh, I, really? we, we should never die with <laughs> all the exercise in our, in our, <laughs> our, our life. But uh, exercise is one of the best uh, correlators to living living a long life, and and uh, uh, and, and I think certain exercises are, are more effective at doing that. Sure, we've got to get our heart rate up, but we also have to build muscle mass, and and I, and I think that's important for uh, for our health. And for living longer, so I'm a big proponent of strength training. I'm a big proponent of stretching and, and getting body work done, uh, making sure you're structurally aligned. Uh, you know, I, I I remember once this woman came up to me after a lecture, and she was all hunched over, and her posture was really bad. She says, uh, "Hey, I've been taking glucosamine, and I haven't really seen any any benefit." I said, "Well." You know, we've got to straighten out your your mechanics here because you have mechanical stress, and uh, nutrition can only do so much. There, we've got to get your you align better and get your your biomechanics better. So, I'm a big proponent of really taking care of your body uh, in every aspect, feeding it right, making sure it's getting exercise, and making sure it's in proper alignment. Yeah, the musculoskeletal health is super important because that's what determines our function as we get older, and we often lose that. So, that's a really key. Key part. Uh, I want to dive now into sort of a sticky area that I love, but you you also clearly love, which is the area of supplementation. Okay. So the argument argument goes, gee, you know, why why do we need supplements? Why can't we get everything we need yeah. from whole foods? If we eat a whole foods yeah. diet, you know, our hunter gatherer ancestors never had supplements. Why do we need them? And 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 sort of first answer that, and then let's dive into actually what we do need. And why we need it, particularly in the in the perspective of longevity research. Yeah, uh, our food supply has changed more significantly than our DNA and what our body requires. And our food supply today uh, has no uh, resemblance to the food supply that we had thousands of years ago. Even the the paleo diet is kind of a joke when you start looking at what uh, what they ate back in the Stone Age, you know. <laughs> no, they didn't they have having paleo chocolate chips, right? <laughs> no, no, it was it was uh, it was much different than than what what uh, we have available now. So uh, the the question is, uh, I think, uh, can we provide the optimal level of not only the nutrients our body needs, but also the phytochemicals from diet alone? And the simple answer is no, it's impossible because uh, our food supply has changed so much and it, it's, it's no longer nutrient rich, it's no longer phytochemical rich. And the type of chemicals in our in phytochemicals in our food is 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 changed and it's changed by modern farming and and I'm sure you've had uh, many experts talk about this but uh, if we look at the, the the flavonoids as I said I've loved them if you look at the flavonoid composition of organically grown uh, tomatoes and compare it to uh, GMO tomatoes it's different it, it, the pesticides herbicides influence the the plants production of these like you mentioned protective compounds so uh, I, I really think that it, it's it's uh, it's important to take advantage of all these superfoods that we have available to us and all these these supplements that can help promote health and longevity. And if we don't, uh, you know, yeah, we, we might be able to get by, but we're not going to be thriving. And I'd rather see people thriving than just getting by. Mm, I, I agree. And in terms of, you know, uh, longevity, what are the things that are the kind of have tos? I mean, there's a list a mile long and I want to talk about your your personal recommendations that you take because you I've looked at your list and it's quite it's quite extensive. Right. But what what are sort of the have tos, the non-negotiables that are really key that are backed by science yeah. around what we need to take for longevity? I think uh, uh, in anything you're doing in life, sports, uh, your job, 
uh, building health, you have to pay attention to the foundation. So your question is, what are the foundational supplements that promote longevity? I think you need a good high potency multiple vitamin and mineral formula because a deficiency of any single nutrient can have catastrophic effects on our health. Next, uh, I, I, I do believe in the, in the vitamin D3 research. I do think that, it, it, that it's critical that we have adequate vitamin D3 levels. So uh, take enough vitamin D3 to get you in that ideal range of uh, 60 to 80 uh, nanograms per ml or micrograms per ml. Um, then uh, next, uh, I, I think uh, these uh, pharmaceutical grade fish oils are a great gift because you're getting these long chain omega-3 fatty acids in a very clean form. And uh, you have thousands of, of scientific studies showing the benefits of of these long chain omega-3 fatty acids to our health. So uh, taking a good high quality fish oil, getting enough of them, getting at least a thousand milligrams combined with EPA and DHA each day, I think is a, is a good goal. Uh, next, I think it's important to take some sort of plant-based broad spectrum antioxidant. A good flavonoid rich extract would be a good choice, something like a grapeseed extract or a pine bark extract in the range of 150 to 300 milligrams per day. You could take a, one of these uh, uh, enhanced versions of curcumin, that, that would be a good choice. Or uh, There's so many uh, great broad spectrum antioxidants. You could take a greens drink, just something that's rich in, in, in phytochemicals that can produce some, some real benefit. Uh, I mean, it seems like the ones that you've actually listed in your personal list are the ones that have seemed to be the, for me, the most data on, on health and longevity, like quercetin, curcumin, green tea extracts, resveratrol, uh, which yeah. are, are, are sort of the things that grapeseed extract, which are the things that actually yeah. are based on the literature, the most promising. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, quercetin is interesting because it, it, it activates the, the longevity gene. Everyone's trying to, uh, like I know NMN is a big yeah, thing, yeah. And, uh, yeah. but uh, what you're doing is you're you're filling in a bucket that has a hole in it. There's a there's an NMN uh, bucket, and but there's a hole in it, and so we're filling that bucket up continually by taking NMN instead of fixing that hole. Oh. That hole that hole is related to an activity of of an enzyme, and we can we can. Um, help heal that that bucket by taking quercetin it it oh. uh, it activates that longevity gene and and that that raises uh, the body's own NAD plus levels instead of having to take N NMN so i think uh what I is that longevity gene you're talking about with quercetin cuz i think that's a very important one for longevity that maybe people haven't heard of it also has seemed to be very effective in covid and helping with the immune system it's great yeah. allergies and gut healing. So tell us a little bit more about the mechanism of action of quercetin, because I think it's something people hear about but may not be aware of. Yes, uh, this, uh, this particular uh, gene increases the expression of the enzyme that, that regenerates NAD+. And this is, the NAD plus levels tend to decline as we age, and, and people are taking things like uh, nicotinamide riboside or uh, nicotinide, nicotinide uh, mononucleotide NMN to try and boost uh, NAD plus levels, but quercetin and other flavonoids uh, by uh, influencing uh, the production of a very specific enzyme can help regenerate that NAD plus in I think a more sustainable fashion. Otherwise, you're just you're you're not addressing uh, the underlying cause. Uh, good medicine always involves trying to understand what's really going on yeah. in, in the cell and in the body and trying to repair it. And so, uh, do you remember you know, the name of that enzyme? Uh, it's it's uh, uh, naphthoquinone uh, uh, oxoreductase one. Oh, that's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> well, we're going to put that in the show notes. It's an interesting mechanism of action, and I think that's a that's a very insightful point. So maybe even if you took NAD or NMN or NR and you of course along with it, it might help, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I personally don't take NMN because uh, I, I believe in, in the flavonoids that, uh, that, I, that I'm taking. But you're also taking a lot of other stuff. You're taking things for <laughs> detoxification and mitochondria, which play a big role 
and aging things to help your metabolism. So can you talk about some of those compounds that you're taking? Oh my God. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, if you're looking at wanting to live longer, you've, you've, you've got to have plenty of energy. So you have to ask the question, well, how do I, how do I make sure my energy producing machinery is working properly in, in the, uh, the best way to, to do that is to focus on things that help your mitochondria work better. So uh, your mitochondria are the energy producing compartments of our cell. Uh, it needs uh, virtually all, all the B vitamins. It needs coenzyme Q10 and it needs a protective agents around it because basically your mitochondria are like a little mini nuclear reactor. They're producing energy uh, and that's what gives us life. And in that process, uh, it, it's generating a lot of uh, pro-oxidants and oxidants that can cause damage to the mitochondria as well as our cell. So there's some special compounds that uh, protect uh, the mitochondria. One of my favorites is, is called PQQ. That's uh, sh short for pyroquinoline quinone. That's why we called it PQQ. Uh, I, I love this compound, Mark. I'm sure you've talked about it, but uh, it, it's found in stardust. And uh, oh. you, you, <laughs> wow. could make, you could make a claim that uh, PQQ is the, the, uh, the spark of life spread through the universe um, because it's absolutely essential for, for life. It, it plays a key role in mitochondrial function. It's, it's, it's found in our diet in very small quantities, uh, but it's, it, they're necessary. And it, 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 uh, it, it will someday be classified as a vitamin, uh, similar to uh, in quantities to like, like folic acid. And it is available in, in supplement form. It's been shown to work very well with coenzyme Q10. Yeah. And, yeah. And, but anyway, uh, this, this, is it related to CoQ10? It sounds like, you know, from the name of it, it may be, but it, is it different than CoQ10? It, it is. It's, 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 it's a bit different. And every time an anti, we use this term antioxidant a lot, uh, but there are as many different antioxidants as there are musical instruments. And, uh, you need that whole band playing, but every time a, an antioxidant performs its function, it, it's, it's called the catalytic conversion. Uh, some some antioxidants are relatively cheap, like vitamin C. It's only it can only be used four times, and then it's spent. Uh, uh, PQQ it can it can survive twenty thousand catalytic converters conversions, so it makes it very special, and that's why it's really concentrated in the mitochondria because it's a very valuable. Uh, antioxidant to protect uh, against damage during during that energy production. Uh, glutathione is another example of a of a key antioxidant, but PQQ is many times more more powerful than than even glutathione. Uh, and and uh, I don't know if, if anyone's talked about uh, ergothionine in in. <laughs> but yeah, no, we we, uh, we do we we do have talked about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts about yeah, it. Well, um, yeah, ergothionine is. But before before oh. you go on about P P PQQ, I just want to yeah. sort of say something about it. It's it's one of those compounds that that activates what I call one of these longevity switches. You know, your body has these hallmarks of aging, yeah. And then the most important one of these deregulated nutrient sensing. And there's I there's I call these four longevity switches that regulate insulin, uh, mTOR, sirtuins, which which have to do with you know, resveratrol and things like that, NED. But then there's AMPK, which a lot of people are taking metformin for, but PQQ activates AMPK, which helps to really work on all the longevity pathways. It, very well said. And, uh, you know, that leads us to berberine too. Berberine uh, is one of my, uh, my standard uh, supplements. It's a compound found in, in gold and seal. And uh, it, it has great research showing an ability to lower cholesterol levels, lower blood pressure, and lower uh, blood glucose levels. If it was a drug, it'd be the biggest selling drug of all time. We're talking nearly, we're talking nearly 30 double-blind placebo-controlled studies showing that this, this compound uh, uh, that's found in, in uh, plants like golden seal and barberry and gold thread uh, can lower cholesterol levels as well as a statin, can lower blood pressure as well as an ACE inhibitor, and can lower uh, blood sugar levels as well as metformin. That's uh, impressive. Has, 
has some other uh, really unique uh, effects as well, including uh, activation of AMPK. Uh, yes, there's a lot of compounds in nature that uh, uh, activate AMPK, and my whole diet is full of them. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just amazing, all these different compounds. They all have some common features. Uh, you know, NERF, NERF2 activation is another uh, key uh, anti-aging strategy. It's a nonspecific uh, uh, call to arms by our cells to activate our, our uh, antioxidant mechanisms. And it, it explains, you know, one of the things that, that has happened in, in, uh, in, in flavonoid research and some of the phytochemical research, uh, they do test tube studies and, and to, see, to see what actions it might uh, produce and then, uh, but those test tube studies show us what the concentration is that's required to produce those effects. And sometimes it's not possible to achieve that level of concentration. Uh, they get metabolized, they get bad with the cell, compounds, right. but right. Uh, they're still active. So how are they working? And, it, and, and then that turns into a really interesting study because we we see uh, more clearly has. Uh, pharmacology has evolved. We we we've rediscovered some of these compounds that we thought were inactive because we didn't have the models to explain how they work. And what we're seeing is that many of these uh, these natural compounds uh, activate really important uh, uh, cellular targets. Like you, you mentioned, the the four hallmarks of, of aging uh, and, and, and and cyclic AMP is is certainly one of those those key factors because. It not only lowers lipid levels, improves blood sugar levels, it increases the formation of mitochondria. Yeah. Uh, you increase the number of mitochondria, you increase the energy of a cell, you increase the energy of the cell, it works better. So it's, you give that, it's, it's like, you know, I look at it, uh, the brain is our, our most uh, uh, metabolically active tissue. Okay, and yet many people are, they're, they're, they have a, their, their dimmer switch is, is turned to dim because yeah. They don't have the mitochondrial uh, energy production needed to to have that brain be be bright and to function properly. And uh, you know, uh, it's it's an epidemic uh, of of uh, mild cognitive impairment to dementia uh, in our elderly right now. And uh, and I think uh, helping them have more mitochondrial uh, numbers and better mitochondrial function is the solution. And so many of the things that we look to to uh, improve mitochondrial function improve uh, brain function as well. I, I started taking this product, uh, Mark. It's from our friends at uh, Natural Factors. It's called Regener Life. Yeah, I love this. I love this product because I take a lot of pills, but this comes in 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 a powdered form. So it, you got a little little scoop here, and you just empty that that orange powder into your glass, and you you've got a great uh, cocktail. Uh, it contains uh, Acetyl L carnitine, CoQ10, and some other key compounds for uh, enhanced mitochondrial function, and it's just a it's just a great way to get that dimmer switch to to turn up a bit. Yeah, I put that in my smoothie every morning. <laughs> I do actually. It's great. Yeah, you yeah. know, I, I I think it's just important to emphasize what you said earlier about these plant compounds that work on these pathways that drugs work on. So a lot of people in the longevity field are thinking about metformin and taking this diabetes drug for longevity. And there's a large trial going on now called the TAME trial, targeting aging with metformin, which was, which is really designed to determine whether or not this is an effective longevity intervention that can reverse biological age. But what you're saying is that there are many of these compounds like berberine and other things that actually do the same or work better than these drugs. Is that true? Yeah, yes, absolutely. And if we look at uh, the, the contrast between uh, berberine and metformin is, is really interesting. Uh, metformin, by the way, was originally isolated from a plant. So uh, conceptually, it is a natural product and it does have some it does have a place in medicine. But I think that uh, berberine might be a better choice. And what's interesting about both metformin and berberine is they affect the microbiome. But if you, if you, I'm sure you've, you've had ways, patients though. that, yeah, exactly. I'm sure you've had people on metformin. What's their biggest complaint, Mark? Digestive problems, digestive problems. Yes, yeah. yes, because I don't think it's affecting the microbiome in a healthy way. Berberine 
it has phenomenal effects on the microbiome. Uh, it has, it, it's a selective antibiotic. It's, it's a pathogen specific, disease causing organism specific antibiotic, and it promotes the growth of many health promoting bacteria. One of the key ones is called Acromensia mucinophilia. Uh, this compound or this, this uh, bacteria, it works uh, with our intestinal cells to create the mucin layer. It's, it's given the name mucinophilia. Philia means love. It loves that mucin and it helps uh, improve the quality and function of that mucin. Uh, when we talk about leaky gut, uh, we, we're talking about uh, the loss of uh, that mucin and we're talking about a deficiency of acromensia mucinophilia. When we talk about diabetes, when we talk about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, when we talk about systemic inflammation caused by a leaky gut, we're talking about decreased acromensia mucinophilia. And bear brain increases the, 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 uh, the counts of this uh, health promoting bacteria, helps reestablish that mucin layer, and is a very important uh, remedy for leaky gut, diabetes, and uh, inflammation, systemic inflammation, fatty liver disease, all these sequelae of what we know are the result of uh, absorbing gut-derived toxins that create uh, uh, all these uh, problems in our liver and our metabolism. So I, I think the contrast between uh, metformin and berberine on gut health is it's night and day. One, uh, metformin, questionable benefits, maybe some harm. Berberine looks very beneficial. Interesting. So maybe we're searching for love in the wrong places, that maybe the plant kingdom actually is a source of a lot of these compounds. And this is what I found when I wrote my book, Young Forever, that a lot of these compounds are in nature working on these pathways that we are trying to find drugs for, but they do it in a way that's kind of more in line with nature, less likely to have side effects and ha potentially even more, more benefit. Yeah. And what's exciting, Mark, is the best from nature is yet to come. Uh, I've had my my fingers on the pulse of research for for over forty years now, and uh, I'm telling you, with with the increase in in our understanding of how uh, uh, natural compounds work in our body, we're we're going to be gaining a, a greater appreciation. You know, uh, one of the uh, the the biggest uh, uh, indicators of of how far we've come in that regard is looking at uh, curcumin. So curcumin has been the subject of over 8,000 scientific investigations. Why are researchers studying curcumin? Because they're trying to find a drug that'll produce the same actions and they, they haven't been able to find one. It's been intense research over 20 years and most natural compounds exert what are called pleiotropic effects. This is un, unknown in with traditional drugs. If we look at inflammation, uh, like a Celebrex or an aspirin, they work on one enzyme. There are over 40 different enzymes that have been implicated in causing the cascade of events that lead to, to severe inflammation. Uh, curcumin impacts all of them. Uh, it's been shown to, to impact every known uh, activator of inflammation. It, well, the drugs only work on one or two. And uh, it's it's really it's really quite interesting. I I believe in the power of nature. Uh, you know we we uh, we fall in love with technology, but uh, you know I wrote a book called the, the Magic of Food, and my 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 thought was how I came up with that title was that uh, 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 Sir Arthur Clarke, who wrote uh, uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey, had had a great uh, quote. He said, any, "Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic." And we have lost oh. sight of where true technology lies because, you know, we're all amazed by our iPhone and our computers and all this technology. But the greatest technology in the universe is, is nature. And the way we commune with nature on a daily basis is through the food that we eat. And you've talked about this uh, for for years. You've you, you've you've made a I've heard I, I, I listened to a lecture where you said food is information. Yeah, it's information. Right. It's technology. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, that's it's, right. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. like, yeah, it's true. It's technology is about information and food is information and your biology is an informational system. And actually there's a whole new theory of aging called the information theory of aging, which talks about the 
dysfunctional information that we're either producing or that's being put in our biology that's actually causing us to age rapidly. So it's exactly this problem. Oh, wow. So Michael, Michael, I wanted to sort of loop back on this ergothionine thing. We're, we went down the rabbit hole of berberine and yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and some of the other compounds, PQQ, but I want to I wanna sort of kind of talk about this because something people may not have heard about, and it's an interesting new compound that we've sort of found plays a role perhaps in aging. Absolutely. Uh, 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 ergothionine is an amino acid that has a sulfur molecule. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's part of a group of compounds called thiol, uh, kind of like coenzyme Q10 and uh, 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 glutathione. Uh, so the richest dietary source is mushroom and when, mushrooms. And when you start looking at the data, uh, you know, we, we, we talk about the Mediterranean diet. We look at the, you know, these people living in Japan that live long and uh, you can make a very strong case that it, that uh, the intake of mushrooms is the, is, is the, is the most uh, significant factor associated with, with these, these folks uh, living longer and being healthier because mushrooms are, are rich in this uh, compound ergothionine. And uh, what, it, 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 it'll be considered a vitamin someday. Uh, the reason why it's not now is that it, it, it exists, it has existed in our food supply in low quantities for, forever, but our food supply is different. Uh, so, f for example, um, uh, this ergothionine is produced by, by fungi. So if, if, uh, the ground is, which contains a, a, a lot of uh, uh, fungi, if it's being tilled excessively or you're dumping a lot of pesticides and herbicides into that soil, uh, the, 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 the fungal content is decreased. With decreased fungal content, we get reduced ergothionine uh, content. And ergothionine, we, we, I in, talked in about- In all plants or just in mushrooms? In all plants, it's found mm -hmm. in all foods, even animal foods, in small quantities. So historically, we've been getting our ergothionine bucket filled, but now uh, we're only getting it filled through eating uh, mushrooms. And a higher uh, diet uh, composition of mushrooms has higher ergothionine levels. Um, and it was a lot of the benefits that we that we know. Uh, or, or, uh, with uh, mushrooms like uh, preventing cognitive decline and, and uh, promoting uh, anti-aging effects, it's related to their ergothionine uh, content. So uh, it, it, I think to me, it, looking at the data, it just really signifies, again, how far we've come from what we're designed to, to be Eight, consuming, yeah. right? Because this is a compound that I think his, historically uh, humans were getting plenty of because they were eating dirty food. <laughs> what does it do? Like, what's the mechanism of action? Oh, How does it influence oh, yeah. us? How does it, it... Yeah, it, it's, it's a very powerful antioxidant. So it's, it's, it, it exerts anti-inflammatory effects. And it, uh, and those are kind of blanket terms, and we, you know, we can look at uh, specifically the way that it that it works. But uh, it, it's a, it's you think of it, you know, glutathione is a is a a, a tripeptide, so it's a very large molecule. This is a very small molecule; it's just one amino acid, and we actually have receptor sites on our cells that pump it into the cell. It, 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 our cells only have those receptor sites for things that are really important, like potassium and magnesium. Yeah, yeah. So Interesting. It, it's very important. So it, what it does inside that cell is it acts as one of the primary antioxidants. And it's it's very important in preventing cellular damage. And we know that uh, oxidative damage is what is associated with aging. And so it's, it's you know, Bruce Ames, uh, who developed the Ames test looking at mutagens, uh, he identified uh, ergothionine as one of his longevity vitamins, and uh, it, it, it will be considered a vitamin like PQQ, like QAnine, mm -hmm. and, and like a few other yeah. compounds that uh, are absolutely essential. And they haven't been a big deal because uh, we were getting the trace amounts that we need from, uh, from the foods that we eat. But now uh, our farming techniques have changed. The composition of our, our fruits and vegetables and other foods mm. has changed. Uh, and we've got this ever-increasing load of uh, 
pesticides, herbicides, and other man-made chemicals. It's just, uh, yeah. So we, yeah. we really need we really need these compounds that are cellular protectors, and and ergothionine is one of the key cellular protectors. Yeah, interesting. It's interesting because you know when I went to Ikaria and the Blue Zones, they ate a lot of mushrooms and they ate a lot of wild mushrooms. It was just sort yeah. of part of their diet. They were always foraging and hunting for mushrooms. So, yeah. are there particular mushrooms that have higher levels that people can buy at the grocery store? Or yeah. is it just sort of like yeah, even button mushrooms will have it, but cremini mushrooms, uh, the, the 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 darker brown ones uh, that are often sold as buttons, they're higher. Shiitake, uh, lion's mane. And uh, oyster mushrooms have the highest levels, but you'll find it in, in, in all levels. And uh, uh, the the uh, well, I love shiitake it, mushrooms. I roast them. I oh, I stir yeah. fry them with a little olive oil and garlic. It's great. Yeah, they're yeah, good. So, so if we look at uh, like the 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 uh, per capita estimated ergothionine intake in in America. Uh, I might not get these numbers exactly right, but I think it's like six milligrams and we compare it to like Italy. It's yeah. like 13, thir it's almost, it's almost two and a half times. It's about, oh, it's about wow, really? Yeah. So, yeah, again, so we, we, you can, and you, if you, and if you think about it, think about all these blue zone cuisines, right? Uh, mushrooms are, are part, usually part of the diet. Yeah. It's true. They really are. And I, I found that when I was traveling in the Sardinia and Icaria and I was like, wow. And they, they always were serving them. And I'm like, this makes sense. It's just, it's just what we ate. And it's one of those foods that, you know, are forageable. So probably you've been eating it for hundreds of thousands of years uh, if they didn't kill us. <laughs> are there any other kind of up and coming compounds that you're excited about that we may not have heard about? So ergothionine, is that something you can take as a supplement or just have to eat mushrooms? And and it, it, it is available. Uh, yeah, it is available as a supplement. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I think twenty five milligrams is a is a is a good amount. Um, there's so many compounds, uh, Mark. And you know, as, as I told you, I uh, I have affinity for 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 uh, flavonoids. And one flavonoid is is quite interesting. Uh, Nobleton. I don't know if you've heard of Nobleton. It's it's a flavonoid that was originally isolated from unripe tangerine peels. And what's interesting about it is it opened my eyes up to uh, the fact that all cells of our body have a, a, a circadian clock, a biological clock. And they screened over, over 5,700 compounds looking for compounds that will bind to these uh, receptor sites that regulate uh, each cell's uh, biological clock. And uh, this Nobleton uh, uh, was able to to bind and influence that uh, that improve resonance of the cell, and this is really interesting because it it has a chemical effect, but it produces uh, a frequency effect, and it causes increased cellular oscillations, and uh, it it has uh, remarkable benefits. Uh, it it uh, reasonable dose levels. It's one of the few. Flavonoids that uh, are uh, is uh, bioavailable uh, it, without being transformed and, and conjugated. So I think that that's one that's that's really exciting. And uh, uh, gee, I mean, uh, there's so many others. Uh, I, I think spermidine is an interesting. Oh, that sounds uh, like an interesting one. Tell us about spermidine. <laughs> well, yeah, spermidine is uh, part of the uh, putrescine family, polyamine family, and. Uh, historically, these have been associated with kind of poor health because some of them don't sound too good, like cadaverine and putrescine. Yeah, no, exactly. But, uh, spermidine actually has a, a lot of anti-aging effects, and uh, it, when we when we lose spermidine uh, content in our cells, uh, we lose a, a very valuable component to regulate cellular function. So we start seeing. Uh, we start seeing accelerated aging in cells that have a lower uh, spermidine content, and there's disruption of this this whole uh, polyamine pathway. Uh, so I think spermidine uh, is quite interesting. We get it from uh, you know wheat germ is one of the richest uh, sources, so there's there's some good research coming out with wheat germ extracts uh, for spermidine supplementation. And what's the mechanism of action of spermidine? How does it sort of enhance longevity? 
Oh, it, it, it basically, it's a polyamine, so it's, it's donating those, uh, those amine groups when needed, and that helps with, uh, with stability of the, uh, the uh, epigenetic uh, matrix, like the histones, and that leads to, to uh, you know, with greater uh, stability of that, uh, that DNA, you get better transcription. Amazing. Amazing. Well, this is just such great information. And I think, you know, we've covered a lot of ground. I think, uh, I think we've gone deep into the world of supplements, which is interesting for people. I think people can get overwhelmed and take too much stuff. And I think you know, you're ambitious. <laughs> I think I tend to be more in your camp, but I mean, it is ex still experimental when you throw all this stuff in your body, what happens, how much of it's used, how much was wasted, you know, what is actually it doing? You know, how do you track the results? I mean, it's, there's all these questions, but I think, I think there is really good evidence or some basic foundational things that you mentioned, and then we'll link to in the show notes. Um, any final thoughts or words for people who are focused on what are the key strategies for living a longer and healthier life? Oh, boy. Uh, like I said, like, just, what do you do, Michael? <laughs> I, I, I do it all. I do it all. I, I, try to, I try to have good thoughts. I try to have a good attitude. Uh, I, I try to uh, have a very healthy lifestyle. You know, getting enough sleep, Mark, uh, that, that is really key to, to life in many ways. Uh, if you sleep well, uh, you have more energy. If you have more energy, life is easier. Everything's brighter. So, uh, you know, one of the biggest tools I've found to help people feel better is to help them get a better night's sleep. I really believe in the, in the power of, uh, of uh, a good night's sleep. It just recharges us. It cleans, cleans our cells. It uh, recharges our batteries. Uh, and then exercise, uh, you know, I... I uh, I believe in that. Um, and then, you know, I, I eat a very clean diet and I focus on giving my body all the tools it needs to, to be as healthy as possible. Um, you know, I, I, I eat the good things. I stay away from the bad things. Yeah, I'm a health nut, and which is crazy, right? We, we, we call people uh, nuts because they're, 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 they're wanting to, to live the healthiest version of themselves in, in life. And uh, it, it's crazy in my mind not to be that way. So I encourage people to embrace being a health nut and do everything they can to make those choices they make every day healthier choices than they're currently making. It's just that simple, really, isn't it? If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. Glycation leads to us literally cooking from the inside, like a piece of yeah. toast in the toaster. That's what happens. And then when we're fully cooked, we die. <laughs> That's why we die. And so the yeah. more glucose spikes in your diet, the faster you age.